Hi folks, welcome to another hobby nightmare. Hope you're having a wonderful week. We're already halfway through the week. How mental, mental is that? We're already nearly there. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. The Patreon button is also down below. If you want to be involved in our prize draw, which is this Sunday on the 8th of October, then please make sure you are a member of the Patreon or you're a member of the channel. Either way, you're make, supporting the channel financially and you're keeping the lights on around here. You will be in with a chance of winning £100 worth of free models from Composite Games. And not just that, not just that. They have other things there too, like Magic the Gathering, D&D, &D, whatever you need, hobby-wise, it is there for you. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you could be in America, you could be in Mozambique, you could be anywhere. I will make sure the, mo the models get to you personally if they can't deliver them to you, right? They'll come to me first, which will cause a bit of a delay because they've got to get to me first, and then I will send them to you myself out of my own pocket. Because, you know, I'm a pleasant person, or at least I try to be, try and pay it forward. Anyway. We will be doing their own uh, prize draw. Composite Games will be doing their own prize draw from the 9th on this channel. I didn't think it made much sense to promote two uh, prize draws side by side. It takes forever. So, yeah. But regardless, they are doing their own prize draw in the description down below as well for more money. You know, for more prize money than what I'm doing as well. And also, you're helping out a really good cause. So if you want to do that, head on down to the description down below. I will start promoting it fully from Monday. Monday the 9th, all right? Cool awesome so moving on before we get into hobby nightmares today i have something to say about last night uh, in terms of my my own life here um i went to see a movie which is why i couldn't re-record the video yesterday because it had no images on it uh because the, the original video got corrupted but i went to see a movie and it was it was called the creator and it was quite good i was quite happy with it you know i, I thought it was, uh, it was surprisingly good for a hollywood sci-fi film it was quite cyberpunky thought it was really cool loads of really cool images and stuff liked it a lot what i didn't like was somebody sitting behind me in the movie theater a couple who talked through the entire thing one of the main things that I do not like in this world is people who do stuff like that. Sat behind me and talked into my right ear the entire way through. The reason why I didn't turn around and have a go at these people is, number one, you know, I'm sitting there with other people. The minute I turn around and shout at them, I ruin the movie for me and everybody else around me. I may as well just they jump on this grenade it's not hurting anybody else but me so I'll, I'll jump on it and not say anything and also the questions that were being asked behind me were kind of ridiculous so i thought okay maybe one of them has some sort of issue in understanding what's going on no problem at all with that right but i'd made a point at the end of the movie of turning around and looking at what kind of people these were and if they work actually having an issue i turned around no that when they when they turn their their voices up to normal volume after the movie had finished and they're, and they're, they're unbroken carrying on their conversation they're just normal people a normal middle-aged couple who are just ignorant just ignorant that's all they are right the reason why i thought this might be a couple that you know maybe need help understanding things in a certain way it's because the wife of this couple an hour into the movie was like oh, oh who is he now who is he now who's just turned up there who's he who is he he's the only black dude in a movie full of asian people he's literally the main character he's the protagonist He's the main character. His name is said hundreds of times in the first hour of this movie. What is wrong with you? What is, if you're not here to watch the movie, then piss off. Go somewhere else. I paid to be here. Shut your mouth and watch the movie. And if you don't have the mental capacity, like a thicko, to understand what's going on, if you can't sit there and watch a movie without gabbing off for, for at least an hour, then leave. Leave. Go away right brilliant movie really good actor by the way it didn't start out too well with the actor in, in the movie because it was a bit like lax the, the dialogue but like he was really good towards the end he was a really good actor so good choice really good movie i recommend it just you know try not to watch it with the ignorant people around you anyway moving on to a hobby nightmare from somebody called jobber and jobber by the way i've named you jobber because um I, it just uh, when somebody heads their, their email with their name and then asks me not to say their name 
I'm like, oh great, thank you. Now I have to re-record the entire episode. The entire episode. If you don't want me to say your name, it needs to be in big block capitals at the start of your email. Don't say my name. Or, or make up a name for me, please. Right? Or I'm just going to go into it and... Here we go. I've got to re-record the entire episode again. So I'm already in a bad mood. Alright? Cool. Jobber says, I gave you that name because it's a bad term in wrestling and you deserve it. Because you annoyed me. Anyway. Hi, Northern Exile. Hope everything is going well. Please keep my name anonymous. <laughs> I've been on and off deciding to send an email to you. Mainly because I stopped watching your videos for some time. A lot of YouTube channels when it comes to Games Workshop turn into a lot of negative reviews about the company and it can get a, it can get a bit tiring. To clarify, I don't dis disagree with a lot of the points. However, it gets tiring hearing about rants about the community. However, I wanted to not rush and judge the channel, so I decided to finally send an email in. Fine. Okay. Cool. Yes. Um, I only tend to... To be fair, there are videos on my channel where I say, Oh, Games Works, we did something good. You know, there are, there are many videos like that on my channel. Um, I, I'm just sick of pointing them out. Do you know what I mean? I, God knows what people are, who have more people on their, on their channel do. Because even with me being a small channel, I get sick of it. I can see people, sick of people going, You're always negative. And I'm like, well, there's like 20, 30 videos on my channel that are dedicated to Games Workshop doing good things. And why the hobby's amazing. And why the people in it are amazing. So, in fact, the message of nearly every Hobby Nightmare video is the hobby's amazing. Alright, whatever. This is my hobby nightmare, and it's going to be broken down into two sections. The first is when I started Warhammer, and the second is when I briefly worked for Games Workshop, both of which were negative experiences and affected my relationship with the hobby. Oh, I feel you there, man. I feel you there. To clarify, there have been good times, but the negative ones stick out in my mind where I don't think I'll be doing the hobby in the future. Coinciding with the fact that the hobby is too expensive now, and I'm struggling to understand why people buy Games Workshop products, even with the discount in mind. I guess the reason is, people will buy what they want to buy, and will stop when they want to stop, and prices are no different. Pretty much, yeah. But you have to remember, man, this is a, a luxury product, quote-unquote, right? It is a luxury product, it is a hobby product, so it doesn't really fall within the guidelines of, say, a car, or, you know taxes or groceries or you know people people will buy these until they they don't have the money for them or they want to stop buying them you are the former anyway on with the story i started games workshops games in primary school i was in year six lord of the rings had become a big thing and a, and i saw a commercial from games workshop advertising the weekly editions you could buy to collect the models. Instantly, I was hooked. I was so hooked that my mum, the absolute saint, had to drive all the way to my grandmother's house to collect it after school because I was a selfish little, little prick at the time. And after that, my class also became a part of it and we played together. I even remember when we all set up a battle and were deciding how to determine who should go first. I said, maybe we should cover half the board to stop the other side from seeing, and everybody laughed at me. Eventually, understandably, everybody dropped out and that just happens. People get older and don't, and don't stop doing the hobby at certain times though. I decided to stick to it. It was an activity that I focused on and it seems to give me a direction. So one thing led to another and I ended up in Games Workshop in Brent Cross. For people who don't know Brent Cross, it's a shopping city. Or Mall, if you call if you're American, near Golders Green in North London. In the corner of this large complex was a games workshop, and my mum decided to drive me there. Okay. With the benefit of hindsight, had I known what I know now, I was ten at the time, I'm thirty one now, I probably wouldn't have gotten into the hobby. To give con sorry, to give context, I'm on the spectrum for autism. Found over the period of two years last year. Well, that, that sucks, man. I'm really sorry that you got a, a late diagnosis there. You know, it's much, much, much easier if you can get it earlier on. But, you know, uh, the only thing you you really get, you know, from, from friends of mine who've been diagnosed later on, when you're older, 
is that you get an explanation for behaviours and things and patterns that were going on when you were younger. But that's it. The times really pass to really help you, which is annoying. But at least you've got that closure of, well, maybe it wasn't all me, you know? Because most people with autism, they, they, they do... I've, I've got a few friends who've got autism, and um, they don't use it as a crutch at all. They're like, no, mate, sometimes I can just be a prick. You know, and that's not autism. That's just me being a prick. I know what I'm doing. I know it's wrong, right? So, yeah, it, it's not... It, it just is what it is, man. It, it's a good that you've got a diagnosis now. And maybe even you can say, oh, well, certain behaviours when I was younger probably attributed to that. Or certain inner thoughts that I had that weren't great probably attributed to that. So, at least you got diagnosed. But I'm sorry it was this, uh, sorry it was this late. That sucks. Anyway. <clears throat> so, I'm not as social and don't pick up on social cues like others do. I also had a lot going on in my teenage years. I was severely bullied at school, and there was abuse going on at home as well. Throughout all of that, Warhammer was my one place of refuge where I could just create something that was mine. This to me was my one piece of heaven away from hell. If you do hobbying now, 40k was a whole different ball game back then, and the community was also different. It was uh, a lot more elitist and territorial. Which isn't the best for someone getting into it. Mm, yeah. I, I never really got that. I never really got that when I was younger. But that might be just me with rose tinted glasses on. You know. And that might be your area is different to mine. But I never really got it in, in Liverpool at least. Um, people were very happy to, to, to be in the hobby and be around it. Because of everything that was going on. Games Workshop was really the only place I wanted to hang out. I didn't have a lot of friends. So didn't have a large network of people to hang about with. And the ones I did were pricks, to be honest. Sorry, just to clarify, I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I'm not sure if it was just a bad coincidence coincidence, or that people take advantage of me. No idea. The issue with the store was that it was full of the worst people you could build a community with. Being tournament players, elitist store managers, and what I can only describe as a manager who was somewhat of a weirdo. The guy would come into work dressed like a vampire... <laughs> Early days games workshop for you folks. Like, I don't have an issue with roleplay. I even laughed once or twice in my life. But that seemed a bit too far, to be honest, taking it to the workplace. The, the store didn't treat me particularly well. I, I've just got an image of, of like, Richmond from, from Yit Crowd standing over people as they're doing the models. That's why I made you. You know, that kind of a thing. The store didn't treat me particularly well. No one wanted to play me, and they thought a good idea would be to stick me with the kids. So every week, I would have to play games against people who were basically nearly half my age. It doesn't sound bad, but when you're in your teenage years, the last thing you want to do is hang out with people is not hang out with people in your age group. It was super embarrassing. Not only that, everybody treated me like some sort of an outcast in the store because I wanted to hang out. Though it's, an, though it's an activity I like doing, so I wanted to hang out uh, with like-minded people my own age. I remember when you spoke about managers hating people who, who hung out in the stores and called them time vampires, indeed. And I think that is the case here. But with everything going on at school and at home, I just wanted a group of people I could share a hobby with. Ah, now, here's the difference, right? A time vampire can't be a kid. All right? Kids don't know any better. Kids do not know any better. If you're a teenager, teenage kid, right, and you're under, say, 16, you literally don't know any better. You're not a time vampire. Sometimes you've even been dropped off by your parents who don't know what to do with you. So, you know, you, you, they're treating you as some sort of crash when I'm not a crash. I'm a games workshop, right? You're not a time vampire. You're just being a kid. All right? Most dudes who are above that have the attention span and the wherewithal to, to do a hobby for as long as they want, right? But they choose to spend their time taking time away from you when you're trying to get customers to buy things. Those will be time vampires when they don't put money in your till. Those are the time vampires. You would not be described as one of those, alright? Cool. Awesome. One guy there my age was a bit of a prick, and the one thing I remember about him was that he was a scene kid. For people who don't know scene kids, it was sort of an emo subculture, except rather than wearing black, people focused on more colourful and trendy clothes, hairstyles, etc. I'm not sure if it was just me or my experience, but every scene kid I ever knew was an absolute bellend 
with a very elitist and narcissistic attitude, as well as being very full of themselves. Well, that's kind of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. If you don't know what a scene kid is, imagine an emo kid, um, but wearing more light clothes. Do you know what I mean? Same hairstyles, you know, like um, guys who get their hair done in like frilly ways, and and I, I even see them now, like guys who like take photographs of themselves and family pictures, and it's like they're posing for a model shoot, but they just look really gormless, right? Those guys. All right. Anyway, this guy, let's call him Jim was sitting near me whilst I was hobbying and, and the moment I talked to him, he just rebuked me and decided to walk off. Having a game was an absolute nightmare because everybody was absolutely ruthless playing the game. I remember playing fantasy and wanted to proxy some Chaos Warriors as part of my Empire Force, and the person I was playing got visibly frustrated and said angrily, okay, this once, as if I had somehow violated the, Gene the Geneva Convention. Everybody there was super difficult to socialise with, but the, but with little other community in the pre-internet era, I stayed. Eventually, the store closed, and I ended up going to another one nearer to me, and that store was much better for people my age, and a community where I made friends, but I can't begin to empathise how bad it was originally. I remember I went to my mum because I wanted to buy a box of Fire Warriors. I played the PS2 game and really liked the look of them. The manager we spoke to, spoke to talked my mum out of buying it because I wasn't going to include it in, in an army. Like, really? Should it matter whether it's going? But I'm going to play them. They looked cool. That's what counted, right? It really, it was really a good summary of what the managers used to be like. Though I can't really say they improved. They've just gone from one thing of end of the spectrum to another. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I get that. Maybe, maybe in your case, like in my case in Liverpool, um, it was generally, generally like, if your mum came in on her own to buy something, and and she said, you know, my son just likes the Fire Warriors. He wants me to buy some. He, I, I, even me, I would probably say, well, it's going to be a part of an army. No, uh, I don't think so. Like, well, normal. This is how you play the game, and I'd explain how to play the game to her. And they'd be like, do you still want to buy it? Because you can't play with just this one set. And if she says, no, he just really likes this one set. He does play the game. He just wants to... I'll say, oh, okay, fine. Yeah, you buy it one set. No, no problem. No problem. And if he wants to start an L a, a Tau army, here's a little brochure of the other things the Tau have for Christmas and stuff, right? For free. There you go. Or, or, or if there's like a, a, a white dwarf there. I've done this more than once. And I'm trying to sell, a, sell an army to somebody. I'd be like, oh, well, they're featured in this month's white dwarf. Here you go. Oh, uh, how much is that? No, it's free. Don't worry about it. It's a store copy. You can take it, right? I, I would do that all the time. Just with like a, you know, one, well, not all the time, once or twice a month, I would do that. I'd be like, okay. I'd give my store copy away when I've read it. I'd be like, there you go. And I'd probably get no loss one just to give away when I thought it could really make a sale. I'd, I'd give it away. And normally, that person would read that white dwarf, especially if it had the army that they wanted in it. They would come back and they'd buy a massive box or, or two, you know, because it, 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 they'd get the bug, right? Anyway. My second nightmare comes from briefly working for Games Workshop. I was working at a cinema part-time and decided to go for an interview. One of the people who was a manager at Games Workshop near me basically told me how to get about answering the questions. I ended up going and got the job. Hooray, I thought. Now, before I begin the story, I want to emphasize that I've been in a sales job before. I worked as a sales consultant for phones for you before it shut down. I made some good bank in commission for someone who worked part-time if you ask me how to sell i can enthusiastically uh, uh, so autistically break down the whole process what to say building rapport with customers different stages in a sale when to close how to make a first person feel welcome and not to force force a sale onto them yeah the, the games workshop get every single one of these apart from the last one Games Workshop teach you what to say, how to build rapport with customers, the different stages in a sale, when to close, and how to make a person feel welcome. Yeah, okay, fair enough. But they don't tell you how to not force a sale onto them. They don't give a shit about that. They don't. They, they literally don't give... And don't really give a shit about making people feel welcome either. They just want you to buy shit. They just want you to buy shit. There's a method to it, but a key rule is don't be an asshole, meaning you are there for the customer. If the customer wants the product, they will buy it, and your job is to discern what the customer ultimately wants. 
you were you are not trying to force a product onto them you are not trying to make them do something they don't want to do naturally and finally though people will disagree with me sales targets don't determine good sales having a healthy mentality towards treating people right does that's a really good mate that that is literally how to run a store you've literally broken it down this is it's something autistic people do all the time they will they cannot see the wood for the trees do you know what i mean they will they will they will break down life in a most beautiful succinct way and then just move on they'll just move on and, and i'm like no 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 you left behind a really good lesson here take it with you take it with you digest it and they go oh okay oh that is important yeah okay and then you know you pull them back and you, but they do it all the genius at that that they do it all the time that they will go ah and here is the meaning of life anyway moving on like, no, no no come back the meaning of life was there you just you just said it you just said it you see the matrix right it's a beautiful thing you see the matrix anyway <clears throat> with that out of the way my time at games workshop was a sales job not a retail one the games workshop doesn't seem to realize this and lies to customers about what to expect they tell you and i quote you're trying to find what people like so you can narrow down the conversation to finding what they want but that's really not the case exactly mate i i agree i wouldn't have a problem if that were true but it's not it's a sales job and you don't even get the benefit of commission for sales made to train you they have this weird 12-step process you need to follow making the entire conversation between you and a customer completely unnatural not only that your kpis key performance indicators a target and resale to see how well you are performing is used as a sales target to see whether you are in the green or in the red all this pressure is coinciding with the fact there's myself and another person who's a newcomer this is near the time when end game started in warhammer fantasy so not only is the pressure on but there's a store with too many staff members and not enough customers so you're incentivized to pounce on new customers the stupid thing is <laughs> had they just told me it was a sales job i would have been like okay fair enough and could have decided on whether it was right for me however they pretty much lied to me about what to expect and it wasn't clear what exactly the boundaries of the job were so i wasn't even able to do the thing they paid me for my time there wasn't the best because of the pressure as well as being told to go fuck myself by customer for asking how i, how I could help mate that happens that, that's just retail that's just retail you get that everywhere you get that everywhere don't get me wrong at my sales job i've had women have nervous breakdowns for no reason and a guy threatened me with violence some people either have severe issues or they are idiots but i really didn't want to work somewhere where i'm just going to be treated like shit i ended up quitting over the phone and leaving it because there's the uh t because to me there's something rotten about games workshop as a company okay this is rich coming from about this is this is the north now this is rich coming from somebody who told me not to ba bash games workshop all the time just saying just saying you told me not to bash games workshop all the time it gets tiresome well here we are it's addictive isn't it it's addictive anyway i stayed in contact with one of the managers there who actually was assigned to the games workshop store near me so we'd always just hang out and, and talk he was a pretty good manager and bought the store into the green for the first time the other manager was a lovely person but under them the store had been in the red he had a few stories including a female colleague getting upset with him he tried to have a one-on-one -on -one with her to sort it out she said everything was cool and then he got an absolute bollocking from the manager who uh, who the woman told after yeah that happens all the time dude happens all the time because she didn't want to deal with him she wanted she wanted somebody else to deal with him he also told me how he would shit he would get shit from head office despite the fact he he brought the store into the green i don't understand games workshop they let you off if you're incompetent at your job and at the same time if you do well they stop any incentive for you to do any better either do sales or don't don't have this vague in-between category that doesn't make any sense i don't understand how anyone can buy from games workshop product or be a part of the store their store managers try to aggressively sell to you the prices are far too expensive compared to other war games and the community can sometimes just be full of unwashed toxic aggressive tournament players and anti-social people in existence and that's not a good thing coming from an autistic person who's part of a group of people who aren't reputed to be sociable people 
How can anybody justify 10 box of, uh, 10 box of Guardsmen for £30, even with the discount price it is still steep, is beyond me. I mean, I know the reason economically, but from a, compa from a common sense point of view, it makes no sense. I've just decided to stop collecting 40k and move on to Kings of War, which allows historical miniatures which are cheaper and more plentiful, and from what I can see, the community seems very wholesome. Alright, so, uh, one thing I'm going to say here is, um, again, just going back to what you said before, for somebody who, who didn't like me shitting on the, shitting on the community, um, that I, I, even though I don't shit on the community, for someone who didn't like me shitting on the community and for shitting on Games Workshop, you're doing a bloody good job of doing that yourself, right? That, I, that's just all I'm saying. I, I know you've had bad experiences working for them. I know they kind of lied to you, and they do have this very wishy-washy attitude when it comes to sales, right? Um, when I say wishy-washy attitude, I mean they want you to make copious amounts of sales, but they don't care how you go about it. And the training that they that they give to you is about 30 years behind the eight ball. It is cold, and they try to make every single conversation you have with the customer very formulaic and unnatural, and then they wonder why you don't get sales. All right? Cool. Um, there's a guy uh, called... Um, I'm going to bring him in here, actually. Uh, a guy called Simon Jordan. And... Uh, if you know Simon Jordan, if you're a football fan, you know who I'm talking about. But this is a guy who owned, I don't think he owned Phones For You, maybe he did. He, he owned Car Phone Warehouse or Phones For You. If he owned Phones For You, then he's basically your boss when you were there, right? And he was the guy who designed most of the sales stuff in his company. He designed most of the stuff to go and get customers to buy things by being nice to them, by giving them what they want and what they need, not trying to upsell them, but being on their side. And that would get you more customers in the long run as word of mouth spread. Games Workshop don't do that. They don't support that kind of terminology because what Simon Jordan was doing was 10 years before the eight ball. He, he was doing things that would be involved in retail 10 to 15 years onwards from his own time in the company, right? Whereas what Games Workshop are doing, they're doing stuff that is 10, 20 years behind the eight ball. You know, this is what people used to do back in the day when you would watch things like, are oh, you being served and all that sort of bullshit, right? Doesn't work anymore. You're not standing there in a suit at Games Workshop going, hello, sir, would you like these Space Marines? No, no. Why wouldn't you like these Space Marines? Oh, I think they're really cool with like a really plastic you know, forced smile on your face. You can't do that anymore. People are too cynical, and they have been for decades now, and Games Workshop don't seem to be able to get their head out the sand and approach people properly. Essentially, it's a company run by fucking nerds who don't know how to do social things properly. What they need is to outsource to a guy like a Simon Jordan, not that he'd be ever interested in it, but like a Simon Jordan or somebody like that who can come in and say, you're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong because you're nerds and you don't know how to talk to people in a social context. Remember, right? Not everybody, people who work at Games Workshop, they're not chads. These are nerds. These are nerds. That's why they work there. They're not good with people. So the people designing your shit to go and approach customers don't know how to do it themselves. They do it from a very cold scientific point of view that doesn't make much sense because social dynamics don't make sense. That's the whole point. It's all, it all goes on feeling and charisma. That's what it goes on. Okay? There are much better people than me on YouTube who don't have as much subscribers and will never have as many subscribers and will never get the same success. Why? Because I can talk some shit. Okay? I can take the same point that they make and say it in a funny way, off the cuff. Like, like we're two blokes at a bar talking. That's why I have a channel. The reason why my channel is small, as small as it is, is because I, is, is because I refuse to do anything else. I'm having too much fun doing this, you know. If I did edited videos and all, yeah, yeah, we, we'd probably get more subscribers. But I, I like this. I like what I'm doing. But the reason why I have these subs and other people who are better than me, who know more than me, don't, is because I do it in a funny way. I'm personable. I try to be personable. I try to be charismatic and to, and to, to give you a mate you can talk to through these hobby nightmares, right? Games Workshop, as you just pointed out there, don't really know how to do it. Anyway. His last, his last paragraph is... This is from Jobber. I want to finally caveat this response to a person who made a comment about Jordan Peterson in your previous video. Oh, God, here we go. I'm not 
here to cause an argument or anything, but all I can say is Jordan Peterson's work has made me a much better person than I used to be, without sounding like some sort of religious convert. I'm in a much better place because of him, and he's provided me with values which has helped me come to terms with the shittier parts of my life, and without him, I probably wouldn't have discovered that I was autistic. All I'm saying is, don't be quick to judge a group of people as to be toxic or part of a toxic masculinity group. Some of us at least try to live okay lives, and mostly sticking sticking to it at doing that. Thanks, Jobber. Cheers, dude. Um, I love the email. I mean, you contradict yourself a little bit, but I love the email. And uh, thank you for sending it in. Um, I, I, I know a lot of people who get a lot out of Jordan Peterson. I personally don't get anything out of him. Um, I think... Also, weirdly, yeah, a lot of my autistic friends like Jordan Peterson. Um, what, I, what I think about him is, is that his ideas generally are quite good, you know, um, at least until he starts going into religion, then I'm like, okay, dude, right, fine. Or starts browbeating people, you know, you're slamming it. Cause I, I've known lecturers like that in the past, you know, they think they know everything and they fucking don't, right? You, you, just, they're not humble at all. Um, so, like, but he will inject really long words and soliloquies and and metaphors into his speech and i swear to god they're there to make him sound more intelligent than he actually is and it really irritates me i don't i've got no problem with his message i've got i've got a problem with the delivery of it yeah you know, i'm like I, I can't take this in mate because i i can't i take you fully seriously but you irritate me you literally irritate me with the way that you talk um, you know, he's kind of like an intellectual Russell Brand. Do you know what I mean? The reason why I can't really listen to Russell Brand is because he won't stop. He won't stop poncing about. Just tell me what you mean. Tell me what you. Oh no 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 no! No Just tell me what you mean. Stop using these long words that you don't even know the fucking meaning of. Tell me what you mean. All right. This is why Jordan Peterson and Bill Burr have a lot of the same points. But I'd much rather listen to Bill Burr because he speaks from a man's point of view, simply to the point and in a funny way. That's what I'd rather do. I'd rather go read Marcus Aurelius than listen to Jordan Peterson. They have some very similar points, but Marcus Aurelius talks sense and from the heart and very quick, and he's very there, and he tells you exactly what he means, exactly straight away, um, whereas Jordan Peterson will, will have a point and he'll dance around it for two hours before giving you, like, five minutes of worthful stuff to listen to you know and that's why i can't really engage with him you know i applaud you if you can my issue is not with his message my issue is with his delivery this is not for me right okay uh, big old jim says yo north jim here hi jim how's it going are you a big person i'm a games workshop manager here in the uk and i have to say I and a load of the other guys and girls who I speak to in my local sector of managers love listening to these to these videos at work. You are the Games Workshop Managers YouTube channel, mainly because you're not as bothered about poking Games Workshop as other ex-Games Workshop people are on YouTube. Don't get me wrong, there's lots of very nice, perfectly fine channels out there run by more well-known people than you from Games Workshop with higher sub counts thanks to that popularity. But none go hard without protection, as you say. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I don't want the image of me doing Games Workshop bare back in my mind. Thank you very much, alright? Anyway, I'll stop sucking you off and get to the Hobby Nightmare. <laughs> Cheers, man. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, so, my Games Workshop store is a pretty cool place. I've been here long enough that I kind of go under the radar somewhat. My store pulls in a steady amount of money. We do our KPIs pretty well from month to month. And we go like, I'd say, green, red, green, red, green, green, red. You know what I mean. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, um, at the end of the month, you get like a financial report. And it basically goes on what you made last year. So if you, whatever you made last year, if you're above what you made in January last year, in this week of January last year, then you're all green. If you're below it, then you're red kind of thing, right? Um, nearly nobody is always green. You know, maybe if you're in like London or somewhere, you're always green. But most of the time, you know, you're green, red, green, red, green, red. You know, for ages I was red, then I had green, then I was red, then I had green, then I was red. I had like long spurts of greens and reds. Well, you know, it is what it is. As a one-man store, we have a great community here. And I will say something here that will allow my customers to know that it's me. We have a collapsible gaming table. 
It is actually a table with a built-in terrain all across its vast expanse, but when folded away, it's a single 4x4 table. Whenever I know head offices are on their way, I put into this configuration after yelling a code word of the week at the guys who are gaming on the tables. All games immediately stop. Models are removed. Tables are put together and folded away in under a few minutes, so it looks like we only have the one gaming table. When we have both tables on the go, we have two amazing gaming boards that are complete 6x4 in size. Lovely old job. I've started to send these tables in a link to other managers and they've started popping up in other games workshops, so we are having the best of both worlds. We are playing games in the store and keeping managers management off our backs. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well done, man. You grow that hobby. Good for you. Head office doesn't do unscheduled visits anymore unless you get a rep of someone who needs to be watched. So, once I was under the radar, I was able to do this and do as I please pretty much. It's pretty epic and the gaming side generally keeps the store going if I'm being honest. I hate stock takes though, the worst part of the fucking job by far. Let's get into the subject of our nightmare though. Sally. Sally is hot. When I say hot, I mean like people stop in the street to check her out kind of hot. She is a graduated rocker, still wears the leather but has tight jeans that show an ass you could crack a walnut on. <laughs> you can tell you're a man of culture, you know, you know, you know your metaphors. Anyway, she is a mother of two young lads who come into the store and has actually been into the hobby herself for quite a while. When I've spoken to her, she's told me she's always been the nerd in school, which is fair. She kind of looks like Ariel Winters with the black hair and glasses, but like 45, although she still looks about 30. Yeah, that's hot. That's, that's pretty hot, let's be fair. I'll, I'll give you that one, man. Needless to say, on a Thursday night, some of the divorced dads started showing up and showing an interest in their son's hobbies when she was there. Yeah, surprise, surprise. I would try to get them involved, but they were literally only there to fawn over Sally. And she seemed fine with that as she crossed the lads of the hobby night with her broken Eldar lists. This was way back in the day. The girl knew what she was doing in more ways than one. She would be openly flirty with the dads in the store, loving the attention but never going beyond the line, but it was kind of like watching a cat play with two mice. Eventually, after a few weeks of this going on, her youngsters stopped coming to the store and went to another store down the road that I actually go to on my downtime. When I saw them there, I asked them why they stopped coming to my store, and they told me their mum deserved her happiness as she'd, as she'd done a lot for them. These lads were twins, both 16, and were really good and mature lads, with bright futures ahead of them. But that her behaviour just turned them off when trying to game and have a good time. And I couldn't argue against that. Yeah, that's fair enough. What a mature thing those lads did as well. They just backed away and said, we'll go here instead. Mature, that's good. Those, those, are, those are two chads in the making right there. A month or two later, and things have settled into a status quo of sorts. Okay. Of sorts. All right. The money is coming in, and I'm pretty happy. The twins turn up to the store and I make a fuss of them, really happy they're back. Then Sally comes in and I know the lads will not be staying along which sucks. Their birthdays are coming up though, so I take them over to look at the stuff that they, they would want as they were both Space Marine players, one Dark Angels and one Space Wolf. A beautiful symmetry of brothers in fighting, that's really good, yeah. Yeah man, can you imagine? Yo, your brother's a Space Wolf player and you're a Dark Angels player or vice versa. That'd be amazing. What good symmetry and as you just said, yeah, good good symmetry in storytelling. Love it. Art imitating life or life imitating art. We are going over if, if one of the lads is finally going to get uh, Grim Logan Grimnar and add him to his army. This is way back in the day when we actually sold the guy in stores. When we hear several loud crashes shouting and shrill screaming coming from the other side of the store <laughs> jesus two dads are fighting like full-on swinging fists and everything 
they crash into the display cabinet and into the gaming table, knocking models everywhere. A few, a few blokes around the store and myself rush in to pull them apart, and me, being a rather large fellow, frog march one outside and tell him to piss off and forget about coming back for his model case. I know which one is his, and he can come and get it after I close for the night. He is banned for life on the spot. The other guy, I tell him he is also banned for life, and if I ever see him in the store again, I'll shove said carry case up his arse. I love it when British dad blokes just get really annoyed. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're just done. In brackets, again, I'm a foot taller than this guy. This isn't me being brave or anything. It's kind of me being a bully, if anything. Well, no. I mean, you, they've got to be told. He stumbles out, calling Sally a bitch and a whore. Well, all right then. Plot thickens. Okay. Jesus Christ. I turn to Sally as she is sobbing and helping people get the store back in order. I tell everybody to leave the store but her and her two lads. They all head for some munch at the cafe next door, so I need to close the store because of the broken glass, but I take Sally aside and ask her what the fuck is going on, and she comes clean. She was seeing both men at the same time without them knowing. Both dads. <laughs> My God! Her sons have gone white in the face and are st and are stalking about the store, fuming, helping pick up models and put them back with the right armies. I tell her she is also, unfortunately, banned for life. Good lad, good lad. Yes, yes. A lot of blokes wouldn't have banned her, but if those blokes are getting that that treatment, she has to go as well. She's the instigator. She has to go as well. I'm sorry. I, I tell her she is also banned for life, but that I'd like to extend a hand to invite her sons back to my store and that she should go and play at the other store up the road instead. The lads agree, and I call it into HQ that two customers brought an outside dispute to the store and immediately started fighting through no fault of anybody else's. I took photos of the place and sent them in. They advised me to close the store to remove the glass and an inspector of sorts will be round the next day from HQ to make sure everything is safe to open again. I did so, had a quiet evening and the store reopened for the Friday Veterans Night. We moved it from the night before and the lads were welcomed back. Nothing was said as I banned all mention of Sally on pain of, of a public dressing down and a banning. Good lad as well and it's good really this is a clean surgical sorting out. This is a Games Workshop manager with years of experience just going to work. Just going to work. Like a scalpel. Just like, yeah, that's the problem. Gone. Done. Right. Issue sorted out. Back to normal. It remains the most extreme experience I've ever had as a Games Workshop manager. The things we do for our hobby, eh? Thanks for reading, Jim. Cheers, mate. That was brilliant. What a cool way to end, end, the, end an episode. That was awesome. Um... <laughs> This does happen at Games Workshop, though. I'm telling you, like, like it's. If you ask your Games Workshop manager, do you have any horror stories? They will come up with at least eight or nine, like remarkable stories that you never thought would happen. Because they're not just dealing with the great unwashed. No offense, right? They're dealing with nerds, and nerds have some really interesting foibles about what's going on in their lives and things like that, right? I love you all. You're amazing. You know, I love nerd them. You know, you know, I love you all. But let's be honest, if you're looking at eclectic stories of weird shit going on, we are the people for that, right? That's generally who we are. Anyway, I love you a long time. I'll speak to you tomorrow for another exploration into 40k lore and a rant on what the next army, the next brand new army in 40k should be. One mentioned in the lore, but one that hasn't gotten any models and isn't related to any factions so far. Hmm, who can I mean? See you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye now.